Galileo decided to use inclined planes to slow the fall of things so he could measure their acceleration due to gravity. During these experiments, he noticed when he changed the mass of the balls, it didn't affect their acceleration. So, in a highly celebrated experiment at the Leaning Tower of Pisa, Galileo disproved Aristotle's theory that acceleration due to gravity depended on mass by dropping two completely different masses and they hit at the same time. But what about air resistance? Doesn't the shape of falling objects matter? These cats seem to think so, and yes, plenty of experiments without air have been done. David Scott from Apollo 15 tested Galileo's results on the moon with a hammer and a feather. They'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? Brian Cox evacuated the air from a giant rocket testing facility, and sure enough, a bowling ball and feather hit at exactly the same time. How about that? But why wouldn't a heavier object <laughs> fall faster? There's more pull on it. Enter Isaac Newton. About 30 years after Galileo's experiment, Newton produced his version of the law of gravity or universal attraction, along with the three laws of motion. In the first law of motion, one of its aspects is that when something has more mass, it also has more inertia. Inertia means resistance to change. So when something has more mass, it also needs more force to accelerate it the same as something less massive. So, these two things cancel each other out. The force required to move the mass and its inertia. Is it just a coincidence then that the amount of inertia and the force needed to accelerate it due to gravity is perfectly equivalent to a smaller mass and the lesser force that it takes to accelerate it? There are problems with this assumption. First, that gravity is a force. Okay, if it's a force, how do we measure it? Well, why don't we use Newtons, kilogram meters per second squared. Pretty funny that an apple weighs about one Newton. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. That would be measuring how much gravity affects a mass, not gravity itself. It turns out that all that you can measure is their change in movement or acceleration. On Earth, everything accelerates 9.8 meters per second squared when it falls. So the question remains, what is gravity? Car. If Newton was right, and it is a force, then it's the weakest force there is, and I can prove it. Here, I'm dropping a fork, and it took the entire planet Earth to cause the fork to fall. But look, this tiny magnet, tens of times smaller than the fork, and trillions of times smaller than the Earth, is stronger than the whole of Earth's gravity. And so, for about 230 years, scientists debated about the force of gravity, what caused it, and why it hardly affected anything unless super large things like planets and stars were involved. Enter a young upstart Einstein from 1907 to 1915 in a Swiss patent office, where he developed first his theory of special relativity, then general relativity. According to his theories, someone accelerating due to a moving frame experiences the exact same effects as gravity. In other words, we can feel our weight and drop an object on Earth, and we would feel exactly the same weight if we were in a rocket accelerating 9.8 meters per second squared through space. Drop an object and it would behave exactly as it would on Earth. Okay, awesome. So is Einstein saying we're on a rocket ship Earth moving through space and we're being pushed back by an accelerating Earth? Earth is round, so how can Earth accelerate outwards in all directions? That would mean it's ever expanding. Obviously, that isn't what he means. If you look around on the internet and find explanations of the equivalence principle and Einstein's explanation of gravity, you always get these wireframe representations of space, and everybody says that space and time form the fabric of the universe, creating a four-dimensional framework called space-time, the fourth dimension being time. And they will always explain that when a large mass, like a star or planet, are present, then the space-time framework is warped or bent. Sometimes they'll show a fabric, like a trampoline with a large thing pressing in on it then something small, like a marble, rolling inwards towards the big thing. This is supposed to illustrate that space-time is flexible and warps more when something more massive pushes on it and smaller stuff falls into that depression. 
But when you use a trampoline and push down on it, you're only showing a flat two-dimensional surface, and obviously space is three-dimensional, or four if you include time. So what does a planet squeeze into, and how does that cause gravity? The idea is that space-time is flexible, and when a large mass or energy enters our space-time universe, it pushes into it. And it does this in all directions, thus squeezing the space-time fabric in all directions. But how does that cause gravity? Well, remember, all we could measure was acceleration. It would seem that squeezing the space-time matrix by supermassive objects move whatever is inside that frame inwards towards the large mass. So, if you're in that matrix, then you're moved in towards the planetary object, or accelerated due to its mass squeezing space-time like the person in the rocket being pushed backwards by the accelerating rocket. And don't forget, Einstein also said energy is mass. Remember, E equals mc squared. That means that the squeezing of space-time by masses not only affects mass, but light and energy. So everything affects and is affected by space-time. Okay, is your mind blown? Is all this just theoretical mind games, or do we have some proof based on calculations? In 1911, Einstein predicted the exact degree of the bending of light rays from a star directly behind our sun bent by its mass, and was measured by Arthur Eddington during a solar eclipse in 1919. Newspapers around the world have been covering this upstart scientist who had been challenging the great Newton and this was proof to the world of Einstein's theories, instantly turning Einstein into a celebrity. So far, gravitational lensing, frame dragging, black holes, gravity waves, time dilation, and link contraction, all of these things have verified his theories of relativity, and the evidence continues to stack up, showing that Einstein was right. Gravity is not a force and the reason everything falls with the same acceleration is because Earth is accelerating outwards into space-time, and our inertia pushes us back into it as if Earth was a huge rocket pushing outwards into space-time. <laughs>